When I was young, I used to be a physiotherapist and I treated children with cerebral palsy. And now I'm a pediatrician and I do clinical work, but I also run an animal lab and I try and develop safe and efficient treatment for such children. And this is what we all hope, isn't it, that our first baby should cry and be healthy at the time of birth. But sometimes babies do not breathe when they are born. This baby needed to be intubated and have a breathing tube done. So how can that happen? Some babies are stuck on the way out. They may have too little blood flow to the brain and the brain gets damaged. And what can we do to treat that? This is one of my patients. He has very good understanding, but his motor control is not good. The physio is playing with him, but when we raise him up, he can't control the position of his head. When we lift him to stand, he can't take weight and he can't walk. He suffered 20 minutes of too little oxygen around the time of birth. Is it possible to offer him treatment that starts after birth that can help? So in the lab, you can try out different ways of treating and, or, and developing um, treatment for, for this problem. Back in Norway, a child fell under the ice for 30 minutes, thought to be drowned, picked up, was very, very cold, and actually developed normally. How can that happen? This little boy had a very cold brain when he was taken up, and he had no brain injury. Maybe we should cool all babies that don't breathe at birth. And in the lab, we have cooled animal models, newborn rats and small pigs, and shown that the earlier we cool them, the better and the less injury they get after an experimental injury. It's important to start as soon as possible, but we can't help everybody. Some in injuries are so severe that it actually doesn't work. So we did a big randomized trials with lots of hospitals in this country and also around the world, cooling babies for three days. And it was better outcome in those cooled than those who were not about 25% improvement. But that's not good enough. What about the other ones? So it's back to the lab. And an anesthetist, I never met him, he phoned me up and said, have you heard that if you take xenon, the inert gas xenon, on nerve cells, they don't die, even if they don't have oxygen? And I thought he was crazy. So I said, well, why don't you come and let's try in the lab? So this is a very interesting slide because what we did, on the vertical axis, you can see the amount of brain injury that the little rats had. 100% means that when we looked in the microscope, the whole brain was injured. With the standard treatment, 65% had injury. That's a red bar. If we gave them xenon, uh, they had a little bit less injury. If we cooled them, and we already knew that, it was very effective. But look, combining cooling and xenon doubled the neuroprotection. We repeated it in the pig model, got the same result. And then we were allowed to try this on babies in a feasibility study. Is it really possible to let babies breathe xenon when they're cold? And in 14 babies, it was possible to do so. So then we started a randomized control trial, cool xenon 2, just 10 months ago. And I remind you, losing time is losing brain. We want to cool within three uh, hours. We want to give xenon within five. It's quite difficult to take an ambulance, drive to Gloucester, pick the baby up, come back, and all that within five hours. So although we treated um, quite a lot of babies these 10 months, about twice as many we couldn't get in time. But the last two weeks, we really had a, a big improvement on that. Look what we're doing. We have the xenon treatment in the ambulance. So this is on the way back from a local hospital. This is the research team, this is John Dingley, and we are now giving 48% xenon to the baby. It's very bumpy. Uh, we get into St. Michael's Hospital in a minute, out of the ambulance, turn around and up into the unit, and we can continue the treatment. 
So what's next? Well, we have to do this for at least two years to have enough babies to see whether this treatment is really effective. And this is what clinical research is about. It takes a long time. I've done cooling for 20 years, then on for 10. And I really want to talk, thank all the hospitals that collaborate with us, and in particular the parents. In a time of crisis, they allow us to treat their babies um, and randomize them between either cooling and cooling and xenon. And of course, we ask them whether they would like to do so. Thank you.